Hello everyone, my name is Rhys Watkins and I'm a member of the first violin section of the London Symphony Orchestra. Uh, today I'm joined by Roman Simovic, the LSO's leader, who's kindly agreed to talk to us a little bit about uh, Shostakovich's eighth string quartet, or rather the chamber symphony, which the LSO strings are going to be doing in a couple of months in the LSO string concert. And also to talk a little bit about the violin, the fantastic violin which he now plays. So Roman, firstly, thank you for joining me. Thanks for <laughs> inviting me. Let's begin with Shostakovich. Um, first question, what, what about the history of it? Do you know why he wrote it or where, where he was when he wrote uh, it? Anything he was it? sent by by Communist Party to East Ger Eastern Germany to uh, basically write... It was near Dresden, wasn't it? Yes, near Dresden to, to write um, music for, for film, five days, five, five nights. Uh, and uh, instead of that, he, he just wrote this amazing piece of music in three days. Uh, he, of course, it was inspired by a completely, you know, ruined city, Dresden. It's in a way reflection of his whole life there. And he brings a little bit of uh, first symphony, a little bit of fifth symphony there. He puts inside of the piece a um, small bit from his um, opera Lady Macbeth, which was banned. Of, of course, at that time, it was no freedom of speech. And uh, he was very frustrated because, because he was obviously greatest composer of that time, but, but um, he was not, you know, allowed to express himself. So what you're saying is it's, it's, this is kind of like an autobiographical it is. quartet. It, it, it is sort of remembrance of, of all, the, all these horrible things which happened to him during Stalin's regime and that horrible period. You know, of course, he was, he was even called to KGB to give report about his close friend who was, who was uh, you know, jailed. In a way, um, his music is the best ever reflection of that time. Yeah. Shostakovich writes this small motif from, from um, his piano trio and he puts it. Can you play it? Play it for us. As if, as if it was, you know, you're Jewish, you're playing it as a Jewish <laughs> tune. How would, it, how would it sound if you Let were playing it? First. Not necessarily like it was in the quartet, but if you were just... Etc. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So it's. I mean, what, what you're saying is it's quite a. It's quite an enigmatic piece, isn't it? It's it because is. he's he's not allowed to express his own feelings. Well, he's finally. He's doing he exactly is finally. That that, Stalin is already dead. Stalin died. You know, 54. This was written 60, um, 1960. But but uh, you know, f fear didn't stop immediately. What I find really interesting about this piece is that he's all the way through it, it's kind of peppered with this uh, DSCH motif, which is which is his name, Dmitry Shostakovich, it's the German translation of that. Exactly. So all the way through you nobody, have this... Nobody da, knows da, da, exactly da, da, da. why he writes this signature always, but, but you know, the piece starts and fi finishes with, with, with this... Um Uh, with, with every instrument in the quartet play, playing, playing, even in the, the third one, pop, 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 it's pop, everywhere. Pop, 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 so yeah, variation. It's, of it. it's everywhere. So basically, he takes, he starts with that, and then you've got first symphony. Then later on, uh, fifth symphony. Mm -hmm. 
et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because it's it, basically, the, the piece doesn't stop, does it? From beginning to end, it's, it's attack from each move. It doesn't stop. First into the second, into the third. And, and, so. and of course, and then you've got this. Uh, Crazy Fantastic. war, uh, the, you know, gunfire. Is it is the is the chamber symphony different uh, in any way to the well, it's string added, quartet? It's basically uh, bass. So uh, he's the adding bass, the he's adding bass, and it sounds more powerful. But the the rest is basically the same. Because I I want to ask you now, coming on to uh, playing it with the orchestra. Um, Will you rehearse it differently compared to if you were playing it with your string quartet? If having, having a, a chamber orchestra and so many big personalities, which the LSO has, you have to deal with not just three people, three other people, but you have to deal with the whole orchestra of, of, of big personalities. Do you, when they suggest things to you, I mean, you obviously have your own kind of concept for the piece. When they suggest things, do you welcome that input or do you, do you kind of go very much stick to your guns and know this is how I want to do it? And it's a good you know. question, very good question. It's a, it's a tricky business because uh, obviously, you know, I've learned that when once I started chamber music, that nobody's right, everybody's right mm. in the chamber music. So ever, everybody has right to to have their their own extremely strong strong opinion after playing, you know, so many years with great conductors. People people have a lot of you know things to 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 say and to express themselves through music and you know but um, if usually if you're doing something but what what is convincing it works and if you if you convince people they 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 buy it if if it's not convincing if you are not sure what you want to do then of course you will you know people will will uh, start questioning and, and you know, we, we, we've got so many different characters in the orchestra and that's the, the greatest thing about our, our orchestra. This will be my first time playing the first violin part. What are the main technical or musical challenges for that? Well, it's, uh, it's you know, it's, it can be tricky because the te tempis are changing uh, quite often. Well, it's, it's always the same. When it goes straight, it, it, it just somehow you know, there is a flow, there is a drive, and it, it, it goes. When there is a changing of tempo, it's always, you know, a bit of turbulence there. But, and in a way, more you want to control people, to, to show them where to play, it gets less together. So it's it's all about as well uh, trust. You have to trust your musicians because they're great musicians and, and it's a great team and it's, uh, in a way, refreshing for people because uh, people they understand that you know playing only five violins in the section when there is always sixteen violins, suddenly they are so exposed, and uh, they they know that each of us is equally responsible for the result, and and they they want to put so much effort, and I really appreciate that. I can see that from the the, the first re rehearsal, and I. Actually, uh, you know, once we play true first time, they look at me and, and I give them approval because it's amazing how people as well play first rehearsal in this orchestra. You always have this incredible rapport with the orchestra, but then there's the other side, which is getting that special rapport and connecting somehow with the audience as well. With audience, it's, it's, very, it's very easy. You either leave your heart on the stage or not. You know, you can't cheat. Skriabin used to say that what's written on the paper, it's not music, definitely. Music, we are trying to, to perform what's written there, but really to perform. And, and, and people come there, they, they, they're expecting, you know, something, something to happen, you know, yeah. even, even if it's not perfect. Yeah. But you say, uh, interestingly there, you know, it's not so much about playing uh, all the right, doesn't matter so much if there are notes which aren't together we're or whatever. Do we're you, human uh, beings. Uh, Look, if if, if you, they want something, they're going to buy a CD which is edited so many times, but that's not what you, what you get from, from, from human being. 
you know, making mistakes. Do you find in the heat of the moment, in concert situation, you end up taking risks that you, you wouldn't normally oh, do? You, have or to, you... you just have to take risks. Uh, but you have to know where and how much, of course. It's easier when you, when you do solo, uh, you know, either duo with, with piano. And when, when you know pianist will respond quickly, this is bigger machine, so you have to be careful. It's easier when conductor is there, because then he could really, you know, if he has got good technique, then uh, in, a way, in a way he, he'll control it better and quicker. Chamber orchestra is more about as well visual com communication and, and, uh, and then in the, when you have them all, their eyes, when they're you know, in the uh, tricky moments, if we are all together, then of course we can take risks, but the, we, we, we have to take risks together. It's not only you know, me doing something stupid and people not, <laughs> not trying to respond. Now, Roman, you've been playing, well, since, since you came to the orchestra, you've gone through a number of instruments, haven't you? You've, and now you play on this incredible Stradivarius. Beast. This um, is a beast. And uh, tell us, I mean, first a little bit about Stradivarius. How, how many instruments did he make or how many violins? Did I don't know how, you know? Ma how many he made uh, exactly was the number, but uh, there are uh, around 400 left, they say, and this is and this is one, one of, of them. It's as well golden period Strat. It's a special. I'm, I'm one. extremely lucky person just to 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 you know being being able to to touch this thing, not to to play. It's a dream of every uh, soloist, every musician, every uh, anyone. Just to to you know people sometimes they ask me, can I can I just touch the fiddle just to have this feeling of something being, you know, 300 years, over 300 years old. Uh, it's 1709, it's the period he started doing this, this amazing instruments, 1700, and then he was, he was make, making them around, you know, 20 years. Mm -hmm. and, and this is one of them. Uh, it belonged to Tibadar Natchez, Hungarian violinist and a composer who, who was actually based in London. Now this violin belongs to extremely generous person, Jonathan Moulds. It has uh, so many colors that, you know, all you have to do is just find them and, and just enjoy because it works perfectly well. It's in great shape. Um, it's easy to play because sometimes it's difficult to play struts. Um, they can be you know, they can be very sensitive. Now, I can't blame Fiddle anymore now. I have to blame myself <laughs> if something doesn't work. <laughs> to say, oh, it's your fault now. <laughs> it's nothing. Even though it has Wolf, like, like every, you know, powerful instrument, it, ha it has this horrible <laughs> note here. Where is it? Do you, do you have it on B? Or it's, is it, it's, it's C, B or C as well. C. But it's... You know, Still possible to control. Yeah. Th there is this story, you know, when Zuckerman recorded the Sibelius concerto, and when you've got this bit, uh, so many volts, and he 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 couldn't play. So so um, uh, I think who was the concertmaster at, at that time? Um, Rodney, no, Friend. Rodney Friend. Rodney Friend, exactly. Said uh, you have to put the cigarette here <laughs> under. This thing, and uh, and he did, and he, he recorded that place. <laughs> it's just this golden middle, you know. I don't I don't know why every powerful instrument, and you can't do anything about it. But that's something just comes with we, it. We we know and we have to deal with. But the rest is just just perfect. If you were to describe in one word what it is about a Strad that makes it so special, what would you say? What would that one word be? One word, definitely sound. Sound. It's definitely sound because because. I mean, describe describe this describe that well, sound. It's, it's, and uh, first of all, it has to be three, <laughs> at least 150 to 100 years old. This is 300 years old, and you can't compare this with modern instruments. I mean, I I tried some great instruments um, from modern makers, but you know, it needs time for mm. for for those fiddles to to just to to. to to, to get this rich old sound, which we 
you obviously get with with the old instruments. That's that's the difference. And sometimes, with the modern instruments, there are, there, there is a risk. They they won't sound so great after fifty years. Yeah. That's a that's a tricky part. With struts, you know, they don't so all of them. They don't sound great. All of them, uh, even you know the 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 violins with the name, not always sound great. It also depends on the setup of the instrument. Mm, somebody who's doing it has to know what he's doing. Uh, this one has has you know it's not maybe the the most famous name. Uh, like Chrysler Strad or X Hour Strad, or, you know, but um, it has everything. I imagine it's got a complex sound when yeah. you play. It's, it's very deep. It's very deep. It's immediate. like uh, like viola. <laughs> It, it has this 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 deepness, also power to play it. You really you can really go into the string, but you can also play, um, you know. Um, It has There's a real sweetness it, there it as has well. The sweetness it's as depth well, and, and sweetness. And, and you know, playing Bach, it's a real pleasure. Because <laughs> certain way to play a strand like do you have to use more bow or you have to use more pressure or is, is it important uh, to kind of it's always kind of better with with um, Italian instruments to use more bow and, and to press less they just they're, they're not um, like French instruments with with viom, you can really you can really beat the violin <laughs> it will still yeah. respond but you know it depends as well strad is is more fra fragile. If we are talking about uh, Guadagnini's, you can really go for it. So uh, let's compare. Like, how would you say? How would you play the Guadagnini? And how would uh, you play this? I would probably play the same, but the re re response would be would, would be different. You know, I would I would really you know sometimes use the power more in in the Guadagnini. Here I have to always still be careful not to kill the sound. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, with Del Jesus, if it's great Del Jesus, like. Um, one which belongs to Marinsky, the uh, King Joseph del Jesu. It's it's uh, literally like um, amplified violin. <laughs> I've never seen I really? have never seen this in my life. It's 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 a power of two great instruments. Mm -hmm. You play G and it it, <laughs> it literally. The, the, so there, I would say, uh, you can do a lot with with, with 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 power. But you know, sometimes to play Bach, it's Way easier on a strut than than Del yeah. You can also get great result with uh, with a um, you know middle class instrument. It doesn't matter if if there is a on the, on you know Heifet said when somebody told him you've got an amazing violin. He said uh, I don't hear anything, and that's really <laughs> true. I mean, if you give not the best strut, just normal good violin. I'm sure to Heifet, I'm sure it will sound. <laughs> Yeah, it <laughs> yeah, would be great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm to ask you, do you feel like you've discovered everything that it has to offer? Or no, you yes. kind of, yeah, you're not. It needs one year. Yeah, one year. You know, I could, I could adjust to the fiddle quickly. I have to say, um, after having it five days, I was recording Glazunov concerto with Marinsky and Valery Gergiev. It's really, uh, I took the risk because it was so great, you know, and. Uh, at that time, I borrowed another Strad uh, from Florian Lenhard, and you know, which is also great Strad, but uh, it was more difficult to, to 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 get results on the previous Strad. Mm -hmm. This one uh, just gave me, you, you know, 
ability to uh, express myself the, the way I wanted. Mm -hmm. People in the orchestra said, you know, the the difference is is huge, as well between Guadagnini and Strat and and between previous Strat because I recorded Tchaikovsky before on on the previous Strat. So you know, people were saying it's it's one of the best fiddles we've we've heard. Great, Roman. Thank you so much. It's Thanks been an absolute privilege, as always, Thanks talking with you. Thanks and uh, thank you for giving us your time. Thanks.